Okay, so I know it's been a while since I've done the last video, but life has been pretty busy. Um, but this is the latest addition to our collection, I suppose you could call it. It's a 1927 Fiat 503. Uh, this is basically the same running gear as what a 501 did, just it had a different shape radiator. It was more of a square radiator, as you can see by the shape of the scuttle there. Similar to the shape of a Rolls Royce sort of thing. Um, this one is in pretty sad shape, as you can probably tell. Uh, but the good thing about it was that we got we got the differential with it, you know, complete diff for a 503, which is really good. And the mule's got a chassis, and even though it looks all rusty and shitty, I got the sandblaster out and sandblasted it, and it's come back to bare metal, and it's actually quite quite good. So that's really good that we got that. I mean, we only paid two hundred dollars for it, so for what we got, I think it was worth it for the diff and the chassis. Um, now the gearbox, we also got a gearbox with it, but that's pretty well. Rooted. I've taken the top cover off, where it'll come off with one hand, see how we go. And it's not too bad inside, I mean, some of the gears are usable, some are a bit chuck. But you can use some parts from it, but most of the, most of the other, most the rest of the gearboxes had it. Like for example, the um, housing is all cracked through there. You can see it should be perpendicular to that shaft, one that comes through here. But it ain't. <laughs> and then also, because it's been sitting for such a long time, it's all corroded and you can see that crack down there, so the rest of it's stuff. You can get a few good bits from it. Um, as far as body panels go, the mud guards are probably fairly decent. Yeah, you've got a bit of rust down there, but you can always fix that up. And this is the other one here, and I've sandblasted it, so that shows how they come up there. But then, yeah, the rest of it's pretty old stuff. That's the rest of the body here. It was a roadster. But we got this from a, um, a guy out in the York Peninsula. He just went, goes around all the old farms and collects all the farmers on the cars for the scrappies come and take them all to get, get them melted down. I mean, here's the block for it. Got a big crack up in here for so the block. And the head and the block are stuffed. And then this is a crankcase. And that's stuffed as well, basically. Um, yeah, she's not happy. We've got this whole steering column and all that with it. But the interesting thing is on the 501 they had a cast bronze or brass or whatever steering box but on this one it's all steel so that was interesting sorry the camera stopped recording for some reason um if i can i'll try and roll this over for you so you can have a look underneath to the steering wheel i haven't seen one like this before but it's got a few cracks on it so you've got one there and you've got one up it's repairable but yeah it's gonna be a bit difficult to show you she's actually heavy but that's underneath inside of her not very happy. But oh, good for a few parts, possibly. It's got the light and flywheel, um, which is also on the 501S. And you can see it's got the chamfer on the end of the flywheel, so, you know, in theory it's lighter, so it'll be able to spin faster than the engine won't have to work as hard to spin the flywheel, and hence it'll give you a better acceleration. But the downside of that is when you're trying to go up a hill, you won't have as much torque, so it'll be slower uphill, you'll have to change back a gear or whatever. Um, now, one thing with this, I think the 503 chassis is the same as the 501. So, if that's the case, I'll be able to use the chassis to whether I make it back into a 503, um, or if I just make it back into a 501, I'm not sure yet. I would like to do a 503, I just got to try and find a radiator for it. I mean, then I can, the rest of the body I could probably build myself. That'd be, that'd be fun, but it's doable. And the running gear is all the same as the 501, so we've got the diff now. With a couple spare gearboxes and a couple motors, I'll be able to um, make up a good pair of them. So, the only thing is, this is the front bit of the chassis where the motor sits. So, you got, I'll get the piece of the sump on a bit that he had. That's where the motor sits, and it sits just down in there like that. But you can see, for some reason or another, it's another it's broken through there. So, they just welded a, or bolstered a bit of angle line in there. But you can see when you lift the chassis. I don't know if you can see that, the whole bit moves. So, I'm thinking we've got another another front chassis, or front front half of the chassis, basically the, the front prongs have been cut off. It's been cut off just after with the um, scuttle frame, like just by the gear shift lever, so. And this part here is still intact, so I might cut a bit out of that, because uh, otherwise it's just useless. Um, the only thing with this one though, it doesn't have a chassis number on it, which I thought was a bit strange, usually they're on the front dumb iron here. 
But I managed to find the date on the engine block down here. I've got the sound blaster onto it. The 25th of the 3rd, 1927. So that's when the engine was made, so the cars are 27. So yeah. Um yes, yeah, so this is the sand blaster that I was talking about before. We picked it up for um uh, under two hundred dollars from Paramount Browns. And it's actually quite good. What you do is you, you put your sand in the big tank here and you pressurize it with, with your compressor, you know, whatever. Um and then you just gotta tap out the bottom here, then squirt out the sand at really high speed. And it works really, really well as as you saw in the um the old wreck over there, so that's really good. Makes life a lot easier. And um, we also used it on the body, and you can see this is one of the doors that we did. I don't know, that took us about 20 minutes to do. Yeah, cause you've only got a small cross sectional area when, you, when the sand comes out, but it's a really good job. So much easier than paint stripper and all of that other stuff. Now, um, as far as the colour goes for this, we've chosen on a red colour. This is this is the one that I like. I'm not sure if Dad and the rest of them like it too much, but I think it'll look nice. You can't really see it, and on the camera it looks really orangey, but it's really nice, so. But it's funny, I use acrylic paints on there and just put um, enamel clear over the top. <laughs> Whoops! No, oh, just for a tester. But now it's on the body. Um, we replaced a whole bunch of wood in this. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, that's all the wood for where the seat goes, and you've got your rails here, because the seat's adjustable, it slides back and forth. But our main issues around the back here, you can see all the bottom of the tub is rusted out. And this bit of wood that's up there, that came on the bottom here. And we also got to replace these main chassis rails here, because although they look fine, that side isn't too bad. But this side, if you're looking from underneath, you can see it's all just rotted and it's not, not very pretty. So we've got to replace all of them. You can see all the rust that should be up underneath there. So we've lost a fair bit of tin work under there from rust. So we've got to make a new one out of them and cut all the old stuff out. This is the toolbox that went underneath the back seat. And that's not in too bad a shape. We'll be able to sandblast that or put in molasses or something and that'll, that'll come back up. So That's alright. Um, now the other thing we've done is we've got the exhaust back on there. Actually, you should hear this thing when it starts up. It sounds like a bloody um, a race car. Really, really deep note. Sounds really cool. <laughs> Um, the other thing we've got to fix is we've got a bit of chuffing out the back, so I'm not sure whether that's incorrectly adjusted valves or a few um, things we've got to fill around in the carby, but that's that's to come at a later stage. Now we also had a few leaks with the radiator, we couldn't get fixed, or well, we tried, tried to fix them myself, they're down the bottom here, and the same on the other side, we couldn't get them, so we took it to a radiator guy who specialises in vintage stuff like this, and he did a fantastic job, it was come up really good, and then... Um, he recommended what we do is we go over it with wet and dry, like sandpaper. We, I use 1200 grit, I think. So whenever that, you know, one direction first, wiped it off, and then went up, opposite of the grain the other direction. And then I polished it up with brass, and it's come up really good. And the shine on there is about three weeks old. So to keep it shine after three weeks is really good for brass, because brass usually tarnishes pretty easy, so... And I mean, although we've got lots of little dings and dents and stuff in it, I don't think that's going to matter. Um, yeah, so we've got that red colour for the body. I'm just got to decide on the colour for the wheels, whether you're doing black or you're doing red like the body as well. Because we've got your tyres up there, we've got the wheels all sandblasted and primed. We've just got to decide on the colour, then we can put the decent wheels on this and get it looking half respectable again. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not much else to report. We've got, got the Morris running really nice now, so that's all ready for the Beta Burble next year when the vintage one comes around. We just had the classic one yesterday. And that, I didn't, I didn't actually know it was on. I wish I went to it, but um, I found out why this has been difficult to start, I think. I haven't tested this theory yet, but I think I'm going to try that now. Um, I think when I've been trying to start it before, I've had the, the ignition too far retarded, so that all the way up, and that means that the spark is firing before the piston's even to the top of the cylinder yet, so that will make it really difficult to start. And especially with this, the battery always goes flat, so you've got to do it by hand. So I'm going to try it today, just, um, uh, if I can get the tap, just so that uh, retard a little bit less. So if it's usually there, I'm going to put it about there. We'll give it a go, okay? Just make sure it's out of gear, and brakes on. Let's sit the camera up here and see what happens, eh? One for 
fry me. No, it's still hard. <laughs> See if the button does it any better. There we go. <sighs> it's a workout. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do. Yep. Anyway. Now, this little tap down here. There's a tap there that goes to your, your fuel gauge with this thing here. The tap leaks, so turn it off, you can see it leaking there. This leaks petrol out everywhere. It seems the um, natural fuel tap's leaking petrol too, so that's not good. Oh. I'll fix it later. No, so that's still running really good now though. And then I know that back sounds really nice. At the end of this video, I'll show you some pictures of all the other cars that this guy had. This his scrap heap. He had a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not much else to report on this, so I might as well show you then now. Anyway, thanks for watching.